Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, I'm going to be doing some spring wall art. For my project today, I'm going to be using this 30 by 40 centimeter wood blank that I got from a craft website. To begin, I'm going to dust a plastic sheet with some cornstarch and also my rolling pin. I'm then going to take my dust air dry clay and get it into a ball sort of a shape. And then I'm going to start rolling it out with my rolling pin. Ultimately, I want it to be about one mil thick. I'm then going to carefully peel off my clay from the plastic sheet. And I'm just working out here how much more clay I'm going to need. You can see here, I've already rolled out some more and now I'm gonna start placing it in the areas where I have gaps. I'm tearing off excess and repositioning it until I have worked out the entire surface so that every bit of inside of that frame is filled. I'm then going to take the clay out and further smooth it with the rolling pin and this is also going to help join the different bits and pieces together. Once I have it all even and rolled out, I'm going to add my Sealy's Quick Set Wood Glue to my wood base there. I'm spreading it out with my fingers and then I'm going to position my rolled out clay in the center. Once I have it positioned where I want it to go, I'm going to be using a palette knife to go around the edges and cut off the excess. Next, I'm going to take some cheaper clay that I had in my stash and I'm just going to roll that out until it's about one centimeter thick. I'm then going to use my palette knife to cut out the shape of a beehive. And I'm just going to make some little marks in the clay to start off with while I'm working out the shape. Once I'm happy with the shape, I will come in with heavier strokes so that I'm basically cutting the clay and then I will pull the excess off from around the outside. I'm then going to add some glue to the center part of my wood blank there. And I'm also doing some little cross hatching marks as well. This will help the clay to stick. I'll then spread the glue out. And then once I'm happy with that, I will position our clay beehive shape in the center. This clay tends to crack, so I'm going to roll out some more of my Dust Air Dry clay and that's going to go over the top. I used the cheaper clay so that I didn't go through more of the Dust Air Dry clay than was necessary. I'm then going to use a palette knife to cut off the excess clay. To create some texture on the beehive, I'm actually using the side of a wicker basket and I'm just pressing it into the clay, rocking it back and forth and repeating this process until I have that whole section covered with some texture. And again, this will be to your liking whether or not you do this. And then I'm going to take my palette knife and go in and add some more horizontal lines. I also then went in and did some outlines around the outside of the beehive. Next, I'm going to carve into the clay just a simple little opening door at the bottom there. Next, I'm going to be using Redesign's Herbology Mold. I'm going to dust the design with cornstarch and then I'm going to start working my dust air dry clay into the design that I want to use. Now, these are quite a bit shallow, so I find that adding the clay uh, can sometimes be a little bit tricky. So just be really gentle when you are pushing that clay out. And then what I tend to do is I'll come in with a palette knife and I will run that over the top of my clay to get rid of the excess and to get a smoother line. This was a very delicate mold design, so it probably would be better used with resin. However, I did manage to get it out. I did have a few little broken pieces, but honestly, that's pretty easily fixed. I'm going to end up casting four of this particular design. I also then went and cast two of this smaller floral design down the bottom. On a couple of the larger designs, I did actually leave excess clay in the background so that you could see it. I just felt like this was an interesting effect to have on my project. Next, I'm going to take IOD's Toadstool Mold and I'm going to be casting this particular design twice. And then I did also cast the same design, but I shortened the little stems so that I had a little bit of height variation. So I'm going to have two of the mushrooms either side, one tall and one short.
While my clay was still wet, I took IOD's Winter Adornment Stamp. This is actually from their previous Christmas release. And I'm just going to take this design and press it into the wet clay. We're just gonna make a couple of impressions. I thought that I would be featuring these a little bit more prominently, but in the end, I sort of faded them a little bit. It still adds some really interesting texture. I just actually felt like it became a little bit too crowded once I had everything in there, but this is definitely a technique that you could try as well. So you can see I've just positioned some up in the top right hand corner as well. And I'm going to also be putting a different stamp design on the left hand side as well. Next, I'm going to take IOD's new Viridis mold and I'm going to dust the designs that I want to use with cornstarch. Then I'm going to work my dust air dry clay into the longer leaf design. So these are almost mirror images of each other and they are really so lovely and full and quite detailed. So I definitely wanted to use these in my project today. So once I've got the clay worked out and the edges are pretty clean, I turn it over and just let gravity help me get it out. So I've cast that that design now I'm going to go in and I'm going to cast the almost mirror image design to go on the other side I did also then go and cast a couple of the different leaf designs you can see there's some that with that has three leaves I just really had a bit of a play to work out what I was going to need I also then decided to cast one of each of the longer designs to go in the left and right hand corners up the top Next, I'm going to be using Redesign's Lavender Harvest Mold. I'm particularly going to be casting the sweet little bees in that mold. I think they are so gorgeous. The scale is just perfect for this project. So I'm going to actually be casting about five of these and there are some that face different directions as well. Then once I was happy with all of that, I started gluing everything down and this was definitely a little bit involved. I had to go quite slow. And again, at this point, if you have any breakages, this is where you can come in and fix up any errors. For the top sections, I added glue to the back of the Veritas mold, but you can see I'm also trimming off the excess from around the edge and I added those excess pieces down the bottom. I let my castings dry overnight and the next day I came in with Paint Couture's Cozy Beige Chalk Paint. I have not used this paint before and I am loving it already. It's got a lovely creamy earthy tone to it really highly pigmented. I just ended up doing one coat. I'm just using a chip brush to apply my paint. It's got some nice soft bristles so that I don't damage my castings. And also I can dab and stipple the paint on, which is going to give me some texture. So I'm going to continue painting the entire piece. I even added a little bit of this paint around the outside frame as well. When that was dry, I took Paint Couture's Light Brown Sugar Antiquing Glaze and I am going to be applying it with my size 14 Eco Brush. And I'm really working it into all of the details that I created by pressing the basket into the clay and of course really working it into all of those beautiful molds from Redesign and IOD. I'm going to continue my way around the piece there until I have the entire piece covered with that glaze. Next, I'm going to take a wet wipe and I'm going to start pulling back some of the excess of that glaze. I obviously still want quite a bit left on my piece. I really want it to be able to highlight a lot of the shadows and the detail. So I don't want to wipe back too much, but I don't want much sitting on the top sections of the castings. We're going to be adding some colors to those a little bit later anyway. When the glaze was dry, I took out Paint Couture's Pitch Black Chalk Paint and I'm just going to use a small artist brush to add that black to the door just to define it a little bit more. 
And then once I had done that, I did also then come in and add some black to the little bees. Again, not too much paint. And you will notice that I am going to then come in with a wet wipe and I'm going to pull some of that back. This is meant to look like an old vintage artwork, perhaps like it's from a page of an old botanist book. Well, that's my vision anyway. So pretty much everything I'm going to do is also going to get wiped back a little bit to give it some age. Next, I wanna work on the frame. So I'm going to take Paint Couture's Van Dyke Brown Glaze and I'm going to add it around the entire outside. We're not finished with the inside just yet, but I definitely wanted to get started on this frame because it does also help me decide where to go with colors because I do like to look at the overall piece. So I'm adding that glaze and I'm also gonna be going around the outside. So this can actually be used as a wood gel stain as well. I'm then using a wet wipe to blend that all in and also wipe back some of the excess. When that was dry, I took out Paint Couture's Farmhouse Linen and I'm going to put my brush into that paint, but then I'm going to wipe off most of the excess on a paper towel. I'm then going to be doing some dry brushing over the top of the castings. I just wanna lighten them up, bring them forward a little bit more. I'm not gonna to be touching the background with this. I just really wanna highlight the details of those castings. At this point, I wasn't 100% happy with the frame. I felt like the tones were too similar to the center. So I took out Paint Couture's Amber Honey Antiquing Glaze and I'm going to add that around the outside over the top of the Van Dyke Brown. This just has a much warmer tone to it. It definitely has a little bit of an orangey tone to it as well. I just preferred it. I'm then going to take out Paint Couture's Bronze Lux Metallic and I'm just going to add some of that beautiful tone to the bees in particular. Now, obviously at this point you could stop here, but I wanna add some color. So I'm gonna take out Paint Couture's Autumn Sage Chalk Paint, and I'm going to lightly go over the top of the stems of the Herbology mold that we added by Redesign. And you can see I'm just hitting those high points. I'm not going super heavy. I don't need it to be full coverage. Again, we're going for a vintage worn piece here. So once I'm finished adding it to those different sections, I am then going to take a wet wipe and pull back some of it. So again, it looks a bit more worn. And then once I've done that to that side, I'm going to repeat the same process on the right hand side as well. I also added some of that green to the plants that were in front of the beehive. Next, I took out Paint Couture's Basil Chalk Paint. I started adding it to the leaves down the bottom. And again, I am going to be using a wet wipe to pull back a lot of that color. But as I was doing this, I wasn't 100% happy with the tones. It was a little bit too close to the Autumn Sage. So I switched to Paint Couture's Evergreen Chalk Paint. This is a much deeper green. And I'm gonna go in and add that back over the top of where we put the basil and repeat the same process. I'm gonna pull that back with a wet wipe. And I just really preferred this color variation as opposed to the basil. So I'm going to continue to add this lovely evergreen paint across the entire bottom section, but we're not going to bring that any further up. Next, I'm going to take out Paint Couture's Purple Haze Chalk Paint, and I'm going to add this to some of the flowers on the left and right hand sections. Again, once I am finished adding the paint in certain areas, I am taking a wet wipe and pulling back some of that paint. Again, if you prefer something that doesn't look this worn, you could leave the wet wipe step out. Next, I'm going to be using Paint Couture's Sugar Plum Mineral Paint, and I'm going to be adding that to some of the smaller flowers that are in front of the beehive. If I inspire you to try any of these Paint Couture products, I would really appreciate it if you would use my affiliate link. I will put it in the description and on the screen. I just get a little thank you from Paint Couture in return. Once I'm happy with how that looks, I'm coming in with that wet wipe again and pulling back some of that paint.
Next, I'm going to be using Paint Couture's Gold Mine Luxe Metallic Paint, and I'm just adding that to some of the taller florals up the top there. I don't have a yellow to use at the moment, but this gold mine is so highly pigmented that it is perfect for this pop of yellow, but also to bring in a little bit of shine. So I'm going to continue adding that in some of those areas, and just like we did with the others, I am also going to be using a wet wipe to pull back some of that intensity. Next, I'm going to take some of that autumn sage and just lightly go over the top of the section where we have the evergreen just to tie the two sections together a little bit more. And then I also added it to the top section as well. I'm then going to use Paint Couture's Pinecone Chalk Paint. I'm just lightly going over the top of the mushrooms that we added. And then I'm going to use the wet wipe to pull back some of that. I just want a hint of that brown. When my paint was completely dry, I decided to do a little bit more of that dry brushing with the farmhouse linen like we did before. When that was dry, I took out Paint Couture's Extreme Guard in Satin and I'm going to be using IOD's Melange Paint Inlay. I have this botanist design that I've been saving. I'm going to put down a generous coat of the Satin Clear Coat in the section where I want it to go and then I'm going to press down. I'm going to make sure I've got good contact and then I'm going to take out my mister, I'm going to mist it and then I'm going to take just a little damp cloth to press it in a little bit further. I let that dry. I then came back in with my mister to dampen that paper. I gave it about 60 seconds to help it soak in and then I very slowly started pulling the design away. This is always the most satisfying part. I did have a section on the letter S that didn't come out quite the way I wanted, but that's okay. I sat that off to the side and then I just took a little bit of my pitch black chalk paint and I filled in the little gap that was there. And I am then going to take a, another part of the paint inlay. I'm just going to add some of that satin clear coat where I want it to go. And then I'm going to press that in just like we did with the first one. And then again, I'm going to come in with my mister, a damp cloth to sort of dab it in, make sure I've got good contact. And then I let that dry, misted it again. And now we're going to pull it back. In this section, I had a lot more that didn't come through, but my surface is uneven. So this is to be expected and it's fine. We want a vintage look here. Next, I'm going to cut up the other part of that design because it wasn't set out exactly the way that I wanted it. So I'm just going to cut it out so I can rearrange it. I'm going to lay down some of that satin clear coat and then start pressing the design in. So remember, you can get an additional two or three uses out of these. So always put them off to the side to dry. Don't throw them away. You can use use them again. Once I'm finished adding the inlays, I'm going to seal my entire piece with Rust-Oleum's Satin Clear Coat. Sometimes you can accidentally reactivate the pigments in a paint inlay, so a spray sealer is always a good idea. If you don't have a spray sealer, you can mix 50% of a water-based clear coat with 50% water. You can shake that up and you can mist that over your inlay to use instead. Then you can brush on a clear coat after that. And here's our finished spring wall art. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think all of those molds work beautifully together and the melange inlay text just finishes it off. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment, and share it out. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find most of the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.